All right, guys, Bezat Hashem. Welcome to the Al Sheikh Academy. For those who haven't been here before, Ruchim Abayim. If you're watching online, people are really enjoying this and spreading it out and getting very good feedback from everybody that's watching. So please take uh, upon yourself to try to subscribe to the channel, share it, get it out there more and more so that other people can Bezat Hashem enjoy from this Torah as well. Tov, guys, so we're in our series on Tehillim, Bezat Hashem, and um, we did an introduction last week, whoever missed it, there's a video online, introduction to Tehillim, what is it, what's the makeup, what's going on, and I didn't think that it was fitting to go into individual Tehillot and to describe them until we touch on this topic of Tikkun Klali. Rabbi Nachman, Aleinu, who's Rabbi Nachman, who is the great-grandson of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, right? the daughter of the Baal Shem Tov's daughter, is the mother of Rabbi Nachman, um, an amazing spiritual master, um, who kind of focused on Balei Tshuva in a way, in a special way of, of returning and picking up from the fallen parts of our lives. And uh, Rabbi Nachman came up with this amazing way to do tshuva, specifically for, we'll learn about it now in depth, I'm just giving a little preview so you guys know what we're talking about today, specifically for rectifying um, the sin of when seed comes out of our body, right? When spilled seed comes out of our body, whether it's on purpose, by accident, there's always some kind of attachment to our actions, right? And how to rectify that, how to pick yourself up back from that spiritual uh, reality. So we have a few different sources here in, in, uh, in the books of wrestlers just to explain what is the background of Tikkun Oklali, how did it come to this world, we're going to see some amazing development with the stories and the Torahs, but uh, we're going to get in, Bezat Hashem. First things first, I'm bringing from uh, Likutei Moran uh, 29, and uh, in the fourth letter, it talks about just very shortly what's going on. To fix all of the sins individually at their core, there's a lot of details. It's very hard for a person to do true on every single thing that he's been through. It's impossible to fix them all. There's a lot, a lot of precise details in every single negative commandment. Therefore, we have to rectify the general. I'm in the middle of an idea, right? So it's in the middle of a Torah. There's some parts that we're not getting, but it's enough for us to get a little intro to what we're doing. Right? Therefore, you have to fix all of the sinews, like all of the, like, gidim. Uh, I don't know another way to say it. Yeah? Shu b'chinat v'yaged lechem et brito. V'yaged lechem et brito. He said to them, this is our covenant. Covenant is the brit. The yaged is a gid, right? It's a sinew, but it's also to say. V'alzed al yedei tikuna brit. When you fix your brit, shu klaliyut gidin, which is the general sinew, the general organ, the general, everything is rooted in the breed. If you fix the, if you fix the breed, you can have the ability to fix everything. To fix every individual sin, very, very hard. If you go from the head, right, and you fix the breed, your your sod, your, your, just to say this so we all understand what we're talking about, your private parts, your reproductive organs, right? If you fix there, the problems that you've made there, you have the ability to fix everything, okay? That's a little introduction, so you can see there. Now we're going to move to the first Torah in the Kutei Moran about Tikkun Klali, and uh, it is Torah 205 Reish He, in the first part of the Kutei Moran. And it says there, Tikkun Mikre Laila Rahman Ali a rectification for a happening at night, meaning spilled seed at night. Lomar Asara Kapitel Tehilim Boto Yom Sheira Lo Chasu Shalom. To say 10 pieces of Tehilim on the same day it happened to you. No specific Tehilim. Say 10 pieces of Tehilim, same day that you have spilled seed, make sure you say 10 Tehilim with the intention to make sure. Kiesh Koach Bamira Tehilim Lo Tsia Tipa Ma Klipa Shala Krauta. Tehilim, saying Tehilim has the ability to go into the klipa, into the negative forces, and to take the spark of holiness that's giving it light, right? Because anything in this world can only exist by the way of the light of Hashem. Negative side of the world as well. They take from our mitzvot, they take from our power and positive things that we do, and they use it for fuel. So now when you say Tehilim, you have the power to go in there and take back what's yours. Ki Tehilim begimtaria lili ima shel shema. 
right? We, we know we have Sammy and Lily, the amazing couple, right? Sammy is Samich Mem, and then the letters Aleph and Lamed, right? The, sat, the Satan, the, the, the negative side, the, the negative minister, ministering angel. And you have his wife. His wife's name is Lamed Yud, Lamed Yud, and then the letter Taf, right? Lily with a T at the end, right? Tehilim is Gematria Lily, with her name, with the five letters of her name. You take her name, add it all up, and you get the five letters, and you add five to the word, you get Gematria Tehilim. She Memunal al and we know it's her job to, to, to make us fall in that area of our body, in that area of our life. When we come to say Tehilim, we have to have intention that the Tehilim is Gematria Taf Pehe, 485. Right? In, in your mind, you have to know that Tehilim has this, has this gematria, and that is corresponding to two holy names of Hashem. El, Elohim. Kel, Kel Elohim, right? El is chesed, is the, is the loving kindness side of, of bun, abundance coming down, and Elohim is the more stricter side, the judgments that are coming down. When you spell them out, right? When you spell it, because in Hebrew we can spell out letters, Right, you can spell a letter, Aleph, Aleph, Lamet, Pei. When you spell out Kel, Kel, Elohim in its full version, right? By way of these two names, that I means, sorry, that is Gematria um, Tehilim as well, right? 485, again. What well, I thought the combination was. The two names together spelled out is 485, mm -hmm. okay? And by way of these two names, you're able to get the, the, the tipa, the drop, right? Again, our, our physical drops that come out, they come from our dot. Our dot is made up of chesed and gvura. Mm. Okay, that's where it, it's rooted. That comes all the way from down here and it comes out of you on your other side, right? That is, the, the dots start here in your dot. The dot is made up of five chasadim and five gvurot. So now we need both of these sides. Tehilim is gematria el, and Elohim together when you spell out those two names. So by way of these two names, you're able to go into the klipa and take out the tipa, take out the drop that went in there. The tipa is made from the dot, like I said, it's made up of these two sides. It has the power of fire and the power of water. Warmth and uh, wetness, right? Which is chesed and gvurah. And by way of these two names, kel Elohim, that they are chesed and gvura, this is gematria tehilim, 485 again. By way of the saying, by way of having this intention, while saying tehilim, you're now able to bring it out. Okay? Therefore, you have to say 10 pieces of tehilim. There's 10 types of tehilim, like we said last week. These are the ten different leshonot, the ten different ways, the ten different songs that David Melech wrote Tehillim with. That are Ashrei, Lamenatzeach, Maskil, Hallelujah, Vechule, right? All these different types that the way Tehillim are written. Every one of these ten different types of Tehillim, they have the ability to nullify the klipa, to nullify the, the negative forces of the world. Every single one of these words, of these types of songs of Tehillim, they're the opposite of the Klipa. Ki Ashrei, what's Ashrei? Ashrei mulashon reya v'istaklut. Ashrei is to look, is to, to contemplate onto something, to look and see something. Efech HaKlipa, which is the opposite of the Klipa. The Klipa tries to take away the power of your eyes. Tries to make you lose the ability to see, to see negative things. The klipa, their main power is by way of what you see. Don't go after your eyes. It's a mitzvah in the Torah, a negative mitzvah in the Torah to not go after your eyes. How is the power of the klipa? By way of your eyes. So ashrei, which is to look, is to contemplate, that fix is, it's the opposite. Right? His eyes got dark from seeing. That's about uh, Yitzchak. Right? Why Yitzchak? Because the Avodah Zarah of Esav's wives caused the smoke to come to his eyes, right? So the Avira caused him to lose his sight. Right? Yehi Meorot, there should be light. What's that? It's missing there Vav in Meorot. Mem Aleph, Resh Vav Taf it should be, but it's missing the Vav. 
דרשו רבותינו זיכרונו לברכה, דבר אבא יסד עם תיקוני זוהר, דלילי. דד, what is מאורות, they should be lights without a vav, that's the סמך מאם זווייף. That's the negative side of seduction and everything. נמצא שעיקר כוחה מקלקול הראייה. Her main power is by way of the blemish of the eyes. ואשרי הוא לשון ראייה, היא הפך ממנה. אשרי, which is this language of, of looking, is the opposite of that. וכן משכיל, so to משכיל, we have in the תהילים, one of the ways the תהילים starts is משכיל. משכיל מבחינת מסכל, משכל, sorry. משכיל, which could be השכלה, could be ascension in spirituality, שכל, right? It's also משכל, which is, uh, they call families in Israel, לא עלינו, that lost a soldier or something like that, משפחות השכולות. The, the families that, the mourning families, they lost someone, the bereaving families, right? It could be very negative, it's a downfall, it could be death even. Right? משכיל הוא הפך מזה. משכיל, to ascend spiritually and intellectually, that's the opposite of that. בעניין זה, במקום אחר, right? This is explained somewhere else. כי עיקר כוחה להחטיא את האדם במקרה, חס ושלום. The main power is to... To, to, to blemish a person, to push the person down by way of these happenings, meaning spilling of seed. The main way they do this is by way of the translation, the targum, the, the Aramaic, so to say. Right? We have a pasuk, maskil al yedei turgeman. You get wiser by way of the translator. He breaks it down with the rabbi saying, and now you elevate and you get wiser. In Lashon HaKadosh, you couldn't understand what was being said. It's by way of the translation, that you're now allowed to ascend. What is Aramaic? Aramaic, we learned about this in Shavuot when we were talking about the Agdamot. Why do we say certain prayers in Aramaic? Because Aramaic is not exactly Lashon HaKodesh, and it's not exactly a, a, a non-Jewish language, a, an impure language, right? It's this middle part mixed up of good and bad. Sometimes it can cause a person, God forbid, to, to lose out, to, to have death. And sometimes it makes a person more wise, right? It's this middle point. So you see here again, Ashrei is vision, right? And they try to break us down by a ray of our vision. So we're rectifying. That has the power to go in there and rectify it. Now we have Maskil. It could be something that, Mishakel, it could be the Targum, the, those middle parts. It could be something that brings you down. It could be something that elevates you. V'chen hallelujah, so to hallelujah, efech haklipa, hallelujah, which is the highest of all, like we learned last week, is the opposite of the klipa. Sheshma Lilit. What is her name? Lili. Right? And now what is it? Hallelujah. But why is she called Lili? She meyaelelet beyelela tamid. Causing you to cry. She's always screaming out this cry. Yelela in Hebrew is a cry. Right? And it causes you to go into depression and to go down and to be in a whining crybaby mood. Right? All the time crying, crying about life <coughs> and being depressed. The Hallel Efech Yelela. Halil is the complete opposite of Yelela, literally how you write it and, and uh, what it means. Yotiot Haleli, Haleli is the opposite of Yelela, Vashar lo peresh. The rest of the ten different examples Rabbi Nachman didn't explain at this point. Gam tipa ba me'adat shu b'chinat chesed gvura. So too, this drop that comes out of you comes from the dat, comes from your consciousness, which is made up of chesed gvura. Ki gam tipa hi b'chinat chesed gvura. V'yadua sh'a dat hu b'chinat chamisha chesedin, chamisha gvurot. Right, the dat is five chesed and five gvurot. And therefore, we have to say ten tehillim, five and five, ten. V'ze b'chinat le David maskil ashrei nesui pesha. One of the tehillim, the second one that we say, thirty-two. Says Le David Maskil Ashre Nesui Pesha. I don't know how to translate that right now, but the David Maskil Maskil is this ascension, right? This song of uh, of more intellect and more spirituality. Le David, a song by David that is more ascending. Ashre Nesui Pesha. Fortunate are those who carry the sin. I think that's the if I'm not if I'm mistaken, it's uh, Tehilim 32, the first verse there. Bezat Hashem will get a proper translation. Rashi Tevod Naaf, but Ashrei Nesui Pesha is Naaf, is to be like promiscuous, to, to desire promiscuity. Shu Nichna Aliyadei B'chinad Le David Maskil. How do you how do you bring down Ashrei Nesui Pesha? How do you bring down the sins? How do you bring down this lust of of promiscuity? Le David Maskil, right? By way of the songs of David, meaning Teilim. Chal Kach Gila Rabenu Zechonim Vracha Aserat Kapital Teilim Befatiut. Afterwards. Rabbeinu revealed uh, the, ten, the ten different specific tailings. When God forbid you have a spilled seed, which one do you have to say? 
וכלביתי טהור, ואלו הן, מי זו ידיהם? מכתם לדוד, 16. ראיתי תהילים 16, ט"ז, לדוד משכיל, which is 32, אשרי משכיל אל דל, 41, קייל תהרוג, is 42, למנצח אל תשחט, is 59, למנצח אל ידידון, is 77, תפילה למשה, is 90, הודו להשם כי הוא וישמו, is like הודו, like we say in the morning, similar, 105, על נערות בבל, right, when on the, on the banks of the, of the Babylon river, we sang the song of Jerusalem, if I forget you, Jerusalem, right, 137, and הללויה, הללו אל בקודשו, the last תהילים, which is 150. That's תיקון הכללי. ואמר שאלו עשרה קפיטל תהילים, הם תיקון גדול מאוד מאוד למקרה חס ושלום. He said that these ten תהילים are a huge, huge, huge תיקון. For that same happening of spilled seed. Whoever marries to say them in the same day. You say that these ten tehillim, the same day you spilled seed, you don't have to be worried at all about the fact that you spilled seed. For sure you will be rectified by way of this. Okay? So that's there. Now we're going... Specifically for the, the aver of spilling seeds. Than... Specifically, but what was the first Agdama? That's why I brought for Torah 29 first, that he says there, not talking about Tikkun Oklali there, that was before Tikkun Oklali. Mm-hmm. There he says, to fix every single individual sin is very hard. If you fix the breed, you fixed everything, right? So yes, is it specifically for when you spill seed? Yeah, but that's nearly the worst thing that could happen to you because that means from the root you're blemished. Mm-hmm. At, in your dat, from your consciousness, which is the holiest part that you could get, the Beit HaMikdash, you had a seed come down that came out in a negative way. Something's very wrong. Whether it's your fault or accident, no matter what, this is the situation, right? So when you fix that, you can fix everything. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to the second book of Likutei Moran, <coughs> to Torah 92. Okay, Tzadik Bet. Tikkun Mikre Laila, Chas We're going to see that there's a development of Tikkun HaKlali. It wasn't like one day Rabbi Nachman said, hey, say these ten things. Right. It really, it took four years, and we're going to learn about it, but Zat Hashem. תיקון למקרה לילה חס ושלום, לומר עשרה קפיטל תהילים כמובא בספר ראשון, right, to say these ten different תהילים, like we explained just now in, in 205. כי עשרה קפיטל תהילים הם נגד עשרה מיני נגינה, these ten תהילים are in correspondence to the ten different types of songs, שנאמר בהם ספר תהילים, that they are said in ספר תהילים. If you want to see more about this in the Gemara, you go to Gemara Pesachim, the Gemara Pesachim, and it's on page Kuf Yud Zayin, on 117, right, there you can see the actual source for this. שם ברכה, אשרי משכיל וכולי, right? עשרה מיני נגינה, these ten different types of songs, יש להם כוח לבטל כל הקליפה והפגם. They have the power to nullify everything, the blemish and everything. כי הם הפך הקליפה, they're the opposite of the, of the קליפה. Right? ודע, כי זה העניין של עשרה מיני, מיני נגינה. This is the idea of the ten different types of song, שהם כנגד פגם ענה, that are in correspondence to this blemish that we talked about, ומרומז בפסוקים אלו. There's a hint here, right? There's ten different, we're not talking now about the ten different Tehilim, to say in Tikkun HaKlali, 1632, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the words and where we see the root of the word, meaning bracha, ashrei, maskil, lamanatzeach, shir, tefillah. Where, where are they rooted? In their root in the Tanakh. Where is the strongest show of that pasuk, right? So we start with bracha. Aparechet asher, et Hashem, asher yatsani af lelot, right? I will bless Hashem. That he saved me even in the night times. That's from the first healing that we say. Ashrei nesui pesha kisui hata. Right? That's the second one. Ashrei comes from the word Ashrei nesui pesha kisui hata, the first verse of the second one. Maskil. What's maskil? Ume Hashem isha meshakelet. Here we go, we leave Tehilim and we go to Mishlei, the Proverbs. And he says, Ume Hashem isha meshakelet. From Hashem, a woman misakelet. A woman who become, right? It's hard, it's hard to really con- translate these things because some of them are in context and very lots of words, but if you want to root it there and go into the source, it's Mishle Proverbs 19, 14. Shir, where's Shir come from? Belayla shiroimi, at night time sing with me. The Vidamelech would stay learning and, and, and praying, right? They say this about the Talmud as well. Nitzuach, what's Nitzuach? Lam natzach al tashchet. Also, right, right uh, the song and the Tashket is from, also from Tehilim. Nigun, where's the Nigun? Is Kera Neginati Balayla. It's also from Tehilim 77. I will remember my, my songs at night. Tefillah, what's Tefillah? Hayeachel Tafel Mibli Melach. Comes from Eov, from Job. Right? Again, 
hard to explain, but there's more in the Tikkun Ezor, and you can look in Job 6, 6. Hodu, pentitef lachrim hodecha, God forbid you should give your splendor to others. That's also from Mishlei. Right, again, why are we mentioning this? To show you where is this word rooted in the Tanakh? Where is the highest, loftiest place that this is mentioned? Mizmor, hanoten zmirot balayla. That's also from Yo, from Job. And hallelujah, isha irat Hashem hiti talal. What we say in uh, Eshet Chayil, right? But it's also that Eshet Chayil is from Mishle. And you have to understand all of these, all of these uh, very well. And this is not the time for it because it's an introduction. But if you want, you have these sources. You can go in there and look deeper and deeper. If you really understand the context there, you maybe will understand why Rabbi Nachman used these verses. So they, they cannot tell me the 10 different uh, Psalms. Each one of them has a different starting, like ashtray. Yeah, and there are 10 different types of 10 tehillim. different types of tehillim. Exactly. I see. Originally, what we learned is just say any type. Why? Because right. any type of 10, you have already their power to do it, right, right? right? But then at a certain point, Rabbi Nachman wanted to reveal an actual 10. An actual 10. And we're going to see the whole history about it. Hmm. These are the 10 you have to say on the same day. That you had a, a, a non-pure an impure event happened to you, God forbid. Mechtam le David, 16, David Maskil, he goes through the whole list here again, right? This is a very big tikkun, that you say it on the same day, you don't have to be scared at all from this. For sure you're going to be rectified by this. Bizchud tikkun chet ze yavo mashiach tzidkenu lekabetz nefusotenu. By way of rectifying this, the way of this tikkun, of rectifying the sin, which again is the general sin that includes everything in it, the Mashiach will come, Bezat Hashem, to ingather all of the souls and to bring everybody back home. Bone Yerushalayim Hashem, Nidchei Yisrael Yichanes, right? The builder of Jerusalem, Hashem, will bring in all of the depressed, all of the pushed out, all of the diaspora, all of the exile, bring them into Israel. Bimeira v'yamenu, Amen. Bezat Hashem, right? So now, we jump to Sichot Aran. Sichot Aran is like the, the, the elders of Breslau say, if you really want to learn Likotei Moran in the depth, you have to go into Sichot Aran. Sichot Aran is like the conversations of Rabbi Nachman, the happenings of Rabbi Nachman, where he was when he said this Torah, what situation was he going through, when he traveled mm -hmm. to the land of Israel, everything like, when did this Torah, these two Torahs that we just read, right? One was a little bit less information, one gave us a little bit more, one was said four years earlier, what was going on? So now we're gonna go into exactly that diary view of what was happening when all of this was going down. Mm. From the perspective of Rabbi Natan, Rabbi Natan was the scribe of Rabbi Nachman, his main student, that uh, all of these books were written by way of him and published actually by his son who's buried right next to the Beit Yosef, Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzhak is the son of the of Rabbi uh, of Rabbi Natan, and he's the one really that we're thankful for him for printing and getting all of these Torahs out. Mm -hmm. Tov, so we're in Sichot <clears throat> Aran, and in one forty one, Kuf Mem Aleph, the Siman Tzadik Bet, the one that we just learned, the second Torah that we just learned in ninety two, Tikkun Lemikrei Laila Rachman Eitzan, a rectification for the sin of uh, of spilled seed, to say these four different teilim, like ex uh, ten different teilim, like explained in 205. I know that these are them. Know my brother. In the beginning, Rabbi Nachman said, he said the first one, he said it according to how we, the first one that we gave her, 205. In the beginning, when he started to reveal what this new idea of Tikkun Aklali, I wasn't in front of him then. Hashem merited me and I was able to come to him, to Rabbi Nachman, he was able to come visit him very soon to when he started to reveal Tikkun Aklali. HaTorah, one of the people, again, this is the scribe, so he wants everything. He's trying to take down everything that Rabbi Nachman is going through. And one of his friends gave over this teaching, told Rabbi Nata this teaching of what Rabbi Nachman had just said. According to what he heard from his holy mouth, Rabbi Nachman's holy mouth. Right? In the same time, within an hour, I heard from another person, 
the same idea that Rabbi Nachman said. But toch kach sibe v'ashem yidubach she dibarti imo mizeh. With all of that going on, all of a sudden Hashem made that I could talk to Rabbi Nachman about it. All of a sudden he had the opportunity. Bechazar v'amra lifanai bikitzu he went over and repeated it again shortly, to you know to give me the the gist. And that's what was printed in the first one that we explained, 205. When he gave over 205, this teaching, he didn't say which 10 Tehillim to say. He just said, say 10. Say 10 pieces of Tehillim in order to rectify yourself. Then I heard from his holy mouth, and he said, It would be fitting to reveal which ten you should say. But if you just say ten, it's a big rectification. If you take ten pieces of Tehillim, no matter what they are, this still stands true, obviously, even though we have the tikkun, because he said it, it must be, right? Now you take any teilim, they organize themselves according to the ten types, you say it, and it works. Right? Ve'az, ve'et shigila Torah hanal. Then, when he came to reveal this Torah, tikkun then he came and he said, the first tikkun, the first thing you need to do, you spilled seed, the first, first thing you need to do, run to the mikveh. Right? If you don't have a mikveh, take a five, six minute shower. Stand underneath the water, don't move, just let the water come down on you. You have to get 12 kabin of water onto you. And if you don't have that, then you can go to the Baal Shem Tov of the Banish Chai and you have how to do with, uh, with Netilat Yadayim, with the names of Hashem. But the best things first, if you can make it to a mikveh, if you're in Eretz Yisrael or Jewish community, you can make it to a mikveh, go to the mikveh. You have to dip in the mikveh. Right? Why? Right now, you have Tuma on you. Tuma can only pull, uh, the, the forces can only pull from you when you're in a state of Tuma. If you go to the mikveh, right, what happens? It's ruach tuma. It's a spirit of tuma. What happens to a ruach when you go inside water? You go inside the water, the ruach stays on top of the water. By the time you come out, it's not attached to you anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to separate it from you immediately. That is the only by way of water, getting off this ruach off of you. So first things first, run to water. Afterwards, he revealed the tikkun. To, to say... Ten pieces of Tehillim. Gam pa'am echad amar shetzichim nizayur me'od lidbol ba'oto yom sh'yeh ha'adam bilti ta'or. Right? You, again, after that he said again, you have to make sure you have to dip in the same day to make sure that you stop the, the impurity. Fa'afilu im lo yuchal lidbol ba'boker. Even if you can't go to the mikveh in the morning. Al kol ponim lidbol ba'oto yom. Go that same day. Right? Why couldn't you go in the morning? Because there's a time to pray and you can't be late to pray if you have to go to the mikveh. That's not one of the reasons you're allowed to. Right? You have to pray in a minion. If you're going to miss your minion, go pray, and then you have to go to the mikveh. Right? No matter what, you're about to get to Shkia, you haven't gone to the mikveh yet, go now. Go now. Make it within that day cycle to the mikveh. You have to be very careful to dip in the mikveh on that same day. Afterwards, after four years passed, what happened in those four years, there's not enough books to explain, uh, to write down what happened to Rabbi Nachman in those years, right? right? You had this, uh, he had this sickness that, that was really breaking him down, Rabbi Nachman. And he already came back from Lemberg. When he came back from Lemberg, that's after Machloket, he had a fight. You have to know that in that generation, you had a couple of tzaddikim that were really protecting Rabbi Nachman, and the majority of the tzaddikim, tzaddikim, the majority of the tzaddikim, and obviously all of their students were completely against Rabbi Nachman. Don't touch him, don't listen to him, don't nothing, 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 nothing. Here we are 210 years later. We see which side was correct, right? We see that the, the light has come out. But this is after all of this machloket, Rabbi Nachman, because of, uh, of this machloket, he even lost his son. He said it outright. Because of the machloket against me, my son died. So like a lot of things were going on there. One time in the winter he was laying on his bed and we were standing in front of him. He started to talk about these ten different teilim which is this tikkun aklali. 
ואז ציווה, עלה, ציווה על, עליי לכתוב על הנייר פסוקים שמרומז בהם עשרה מנייני נגינה שהם תיקון הנ"ל. Then he told me to take a piece of paper and to write there these hints on, of these ten different types of uh, songs, which is part of this תיקון. וישבתי לכתוב מפיו יקרא אליי, right? I started to write and he's reading to me. וגילה לי הפסוקים, he revealed to me these פסוקים, and this is what we read in Tzadik Bet in 92, which was from Mishlei, from Yov, from Ashra, from uh, Tehilim, that's when he revealed to him, four years after, right? When he's in some winter night, this is when he revealed him. ואז גילה דעתו שרצונו לגלות בפרטיות איזה מעשרה קפיטל תהילים שצריכים לומר באותו יום. Then he said, I want to reveal which of them to, you know, to say on the same day. And we were standing there expecting it and waiting for him to reveal it to us. ולא זכינו מיד, and we didn't merit to get it straight away. אחר כך נסענו, after that we traveled from him. ואחר כך הייתי אצלו באיזה שבת, after that I came at a certain שבת to him, והזמין השם יתברך שראיתי בעיניי כתיבת יד הקדושה, השם made it, invited me to see with my own eyes his holy writing, that he already wrote the ten תהילים down that you have to say. אך לא היה מדרך ארץ שיקח כתב ידו בעצמי בלי רשותו. It's not דרך ארץ that I'm gonna, it's not proper, it's not fitting, it's not respectful that I'm gonna come take his writing without asking him. ורציתי לתפסם במוחי בעל פה, I try to remember them in my head, ולא יכלתי מחמת אימת רבי, פן יקפיד. I couldn't remember them because I was so scared of my rabbi that God forbid he's gonna hold it against me that I came in, because you're gonna see now he's gonna explain it. כי באתי לחדרו ומצאתי. I came to his room and I found him. When? כתב ידו, I found his writing. When? והסתלקלתי בלא, and והסתלקלתי בו בלא רשות. I looked at it. Without his permission, this was during Parashat Shkalim in the year Taf Kuf Ayn. Taf Kuf Ayn is, right now we're in uh, Taf Shin Pei. It's a 210, uh, yeah, 213 years. It's very close to his passing. Shui Yatsa Mechedro, when he passed the Bet HaGadol, Rabbi Nachman left his office and he went to the, the big house. Because there was Torah reading at the time. And then I went into his office and I saw everything. This is the story. This is how Rabbi Nathan figured it out. After that, on, on Sunday, on the first day, I asked him for permission to go to my house. And when I came, I, I asked him, I said, Rabbi Nachman, maybe tell me the ten, the ten different the, the ten different chapters that we have to say. כי ידעתי שכבר הם נרשמים אצלו, I knew they were written down in his office. ולא רצה, he didn't want to tell me. ואמר שיהיה עת אחר לזה, והלכתי מאיתו. He said there's going to be a different time for this, and I left. אחר כך סמוך לאותה עת, בעת שהייתי אני בביתי בנימירוב. After that, in the, so close to that same time, when I was in my house in נימירוב, אז גילה עשרה קפיטל תהילים לפני הרב דפו ברסלב ולפני חברי רבי נפתלי מנימירוב. When Rabbi, Nat- Rabbi Nathan's at home in Nimirov, in a different country, a different city, maybe today even a different country, right? And, and Rabbi Nachman reveals to the Rabbi of Breslev and to his friend, Rabbi, Rabbi Naftali of Nimirov, he reveals to him this idea of Tikkun Uklali. He took them and he said, you guys are my witnesses, two kosher witnesses, and he said to them, since this is a known idea, the, the idea that men spill seed. A person for sure could have three parts of their world, right? Captured up. I'm taking you now as a testifier, as, as witnesses. And no. These ten chapters are very, very beneficial to fixing spilled seed. Not only are they a complete rectification, it's very beneficial. Very, very beneficial. Some people still see because they eat or drink too much. Or they're weak and they're tired. Fatigued. Or because they don't lie down properly at night time. Right, the Arizal says we have to lay on our left side. And after Chatzot, only then you can turn to the right. And you're never allowed to lay on your back to the point that you're not meant to wake Jews up when they're sleeping. If a Jew's sleeping on his back, you should wake him up and tell him to go to his side. Right? All of that, any of these eating too much, drinking too much, or weakness, or fatigue, or lying the right way, that, 
That's not so bad if you're supposed to eat that way. It's like a baby that pees in his, in, 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 while he's sleeping. There's also those that they, they save you, they guard you from up above, and they guard you that you don't spill seed. Or your mazal, your fortune, your malach, whatever it is, is watching over you, and you're not going to spill. Sometimes it appears to you in your dream at night that you're as if you're falling, as if you're doing some kind of act. Afterwards, you wake up from your sleep. That too is from Shemaim that they woke you up in the middle of the dream and they saved you. But someone who, God forbid, it happens to them because of thoughts. From this, God forbid, you really create klipa. You create negative verses in the world. Like it's written in the books, in Bereshit, uh, Zohar Bereshit. Whoever that happens, he thought during the day and now he spilled seed at night, right? He wasn't guarding himself during the day and now when he goes to sleep, the seed comes out. You say these ten teilim, for sure he's going to rectify this very much. There's a few different tzaddikim that try to make this revelation. They try to finish, make this tikkun. A lot of them, some of them didn't know any, anything of this idea. And a few of them started to learn a little bit about this rectification. Meaning Rabbi Nachman's talking about tzaddikim before him. Right? That some of them, they wanted to, but they didn't even know where to begin. Some of them knew a little bit, right? And they started, they, they passed away in the middle of trying to compile a tikkun for this. They didn't finish it. Meaning Rabbi Nachman talking to me, Hashem helped me. I managed to get through this whole entire thing completely. By way of sending these 10 pieces of Tehillim that we mentioned, it's a brand new idea, novel idea, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, amazing Tikkun rectification, very, very much so. Whoever can go to the mikveh and then afterwards say these 10, first, uh, 10 chapters, for sure, what, what is the good? But even if he's against his will, he can't. He can't go to the mikveh. Like he's sick or he's traveling right now. Even though that's the case, he can't go to the mikveh. Say these ten tikkunim and you'll be fortunate. Because they're a very big rectification. And if you say them properly with intention, even better, right? If you can say them with proper kavanah. Just saying them though, that's also great. He says, if for sure, we would want to nullify this completely from the world, right? You can't do this spiritually, and you can't do this physically. You can't do it physically, why? To change, to make it that no one ever spills seed, you would have to change nature of the whole entire world, right? Constantly. No one can do this. Even Moshe Rabbeinu, peace be on him, Shebitzel HaTeva Aya Rak Lefi Sha'a Vedivar Prati. Moshe, he did nullify nature, but it was according to a, sp- a specific event, time, meaning a time, and it was one thing. The sea split, not the, the whole world split in half, right? The sea split, and it was for a period of time. Kegon Kriyat Yamsuf, or Bikyat Yarden, or Yoshua split the Jordan. It was for a little bit of time. But to nullify nature of the whole entire mankind. Everyone has the job to change the Teva by himself. You have to change your nature. You have to also not only do that, it's not for a period of time, that, and it's not on everybody. You have to do this constantly if you want to grow. A person can't do this to the whole world, not even on a spiritual level. But these 10 pieces of Tehillim are very precious and very, very wonderful, and they're very beneficial. And he also took them to Edut, and he said, after I pass away, whoever can come to my kever and say these 10 pieces of Tehillim, and he give a pruta, a coin to tzedakah, 
אפילו אם גדלו ועצמו עוונותיו וחטאיו, even if his sins have become very, very great, he's done a lot of sins. מאוד מאוד חס ושלום. A lot, a lot of sins, God forbid. אזי שיתאמץ וישתדל לאורך לרוחב להושיעו לתקנו. I will do it all in my might, Rabbi Nachman says, to the lengths and to the wits, to try to help him, to rectify him. ואני חזק מאוד בכל הדברים שלי. I'm very strong with everything I ever said. אך בזה אני חזק ביותר. But this I'm the strongest of all. This I mean the most. שאלו עשרה קפיטל מועילים מאוד מאוד. These ten pieces of תהילים are very very beneficial. And these are them. 1937, 1950. גם אמר אז, he also said on this idea that these ten תהילים, you should say them and, and you should reveal them to everybody. ואף על פי שהוא דבר קל לומר בעשרה קפיטל תהילים. Even though it's a very easy thing to say ten pieces of תהילים, אף על פי כן גם זה יהיה כבד מאוד לקיים. It's so easy to say תהילים that this is going to be extremely hard for you to do. Exactly, that's what Rabbi Nachman says. It's not so easy. To say Tehilim, to say 10, really, what are you doing? It takes you 7 minutes, 10 pieces of Tehilim, right? All of a sudden, Rabbi Nachman says, this is going to be extremely hard for you to do. So too, Rabbi Nachman says, in our times, from so much machloket against Rabbi Nachman. Tons of people, the majority of the nation, again, we're talking 200 years ago, are very far from doing this. Now it's very hard to go into a synagogue and not find Tikkun HaKlali, right? But that's only in the last 15, 20 years that that's been like that. For 200 years, there's uh, maybe 500 wrestler families. In the past 30 years, there's 60,000 people that go to Ulman every year. Right? He said all of this beforehand, and now we did what's upon us in order to make it revealed to the whole entire world and to rectify themselves. And anybody who wants to fix themselves, everybody, the good in their heart, they should do. In their eyes, they should do. Right? You want to listen, you're going to listen and understand. If you don't want to, if you want to nullify yourself and not do anything, you're not going to do anything to fix yourself. Our souls we've saved. This is not relevant so much. So this is, uh, this is exactly, no one ever knew about this. It was a complete revelation of Rabbi Nachman. אשר כל הצדיקים מתגעגעים לזה, all of the צדיקים wanted to try to rectify this. אשר ילצוני לגלות כל, השם saved the Rabbi Nachman and gave him the opportunity to reveal everything. זכותו יעמוד לנו, may his merit stand for us, ומכל פגמנו וצרותינו יתקננו ויושיענו from all of our blemishes and all of our hardships and all of the things that we need to be rectified in. בעזרת השם will be a full salvation, the זכות of Rabbi Nachman, by way of השם יתברך, אמן כן יהי רצון. So again, just to rectify, 16, 32, 41, 42, 59, 77, 90, 105, 137, 150. Man, spell seed, say this. General, I should have said this earlier. This was very manly oriented, right? Spell seed. I know personal stories of... This person was very, very depressed a few years ago. This person was very, very depressed. And I came to them and I said, they say if you read this for 40 days, miracles happen. Not religious person. I said, you have nothing to lose. The situation you're in right now is just the beginning. If you don't do anything, you're going to fall even further into depression because it just happened and it's only going to get worse with time. Take this. The rabbis say it works and it does amazing things. Meanwhile, at, my, at that time, I barely knew who Rabbi Nachman was. I didn't even know at all what Tikkun HaKlali was. Right? I said, here, say it. Within 20 days, this person showed up to Mincha of Rosh Hashanah, heard the shofar, was there a whole entire tefillah of Yom Kippur. Never went to shul ever for anything besides bar mitzvahs and weddings. 
right? Was there Yom Kippur, Sukkot, now this person is married, children, living in Crown Heights, Hasidish family and everything, right? I'm not saying it's because of me, but this is the power of Tikkun Eklali. Up until that point, the person had, not, had done nothing in spirituality. Tikkun Eklali was the first step and now complete Hasidish family, married and happy. So that's one story. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of stories from the past 210 years of this Tikkun. May we all be very, very lucky to say it whenever we need. Bezat Hashem. Amen.